at number 10, we have Seven Limousines. Starting off strong with her gigantic and expensive entourage to walk three city blocks. Apparently, she was staying at the Metropolitan when she decided to walk to the Dorchester restaurant, which was three blocks away. Instead of having her personalized bodyguards or a small group of people to keep her safe, she insisted she hire seven limos so she could travel the 200 yards from point A to point B without being bothered. Afterwards, she claimed that exercise and working out is something that makes her the happiest in life. Like walking 200 yards with a full entourage is truly exercising. The entire situation is so bizarre and out of touch, you can't help but recognize it as diva behavior. At number 9, we have how she got someone fired for asking for an autograph. A hotel maid asked her for an autograph, which is totally respectful, because she's literally Jennifer Lopez. But it was how she responded that made her such a diva. When the maid asked her very politely for an autograph, nothing came of it. But a day later, the maid received a phone call from the cleaning company she was employed with to let her know that Jen complained about it and she was fired from that point on. What makes the situation worse is that the hotel tried to deny it happening to maintain its image. Not only is it shady, but the maid risked it all for little reward. Who would think that Jenny from the block would be such a princess about a fan? At number eight, we have the diamond encrusted headphones. It makes sense to have sound canceling headphones with you, especially when you have sensitive ears. But when they're entirely diamond encrusted and worth almost $6,000, it's too much. One of the more infamous moments she wore the headphones was when she was showing up to the World Music Awards on her personal speedboat. And it wasn't just personalized to her, it was completely custom made, with custom love seats that were faux leather and champagne coolers. But because the boat on the water was just too loud, she had the noise canceling headphones. And like I mentioned before, they were entirely diamond encrusted. Like regular headphones just weren't enough. At number seven, we have how she won't respond to her flight attendant. She has her own private jet with her own personal flight attendants, and she wouldn't even make conversation with them. It was in 2012 when she was in hot water for it because one of her flight attendants came forward saying that she was ghosting her. The attendant in question came up to her and a few of her guests and asked if she wanted anything to drink. Jen looked at her, turned her head away from her, and told her personal assistant to tell the attendant that she would like a Diet Coke with a lime. Obviously, this is jaw-dropping behavior for anyone, even if it is on par for Jen. At number six, we have $20 million to be a judge. While she was one of the hosts on American Idol, she was charging $20 million a season. And to add to it, she even bought out Simon Cowell for $12 million so she could replace him. And to prove how much of a diva she really is, her appearance alone rejuvenated the show, so they were willing to cough up the big bucks just to keep her. She wouldn't just judge people on their talent though, she would often judge people on how they smelled. But according to her, at least she didn't judge people on how they looked. Like that's any better. At number five, we have how the construction crew was not allowed to make eye contact with her. It makes sense when one person's staring too aggressively or with weird intentions. But when it's a huge group of people, it's a little excessive, even for human behavior. She'd hired a crew to refurbish her mansion home, and if she was around them, they were not allowed to make eye contact with her, and they weren't allowed to speak to her at all either. But that's not all. A lot of her previous helpers said the same thing, like her drivers and other caretakers. She actually ended up selling that home for $27 million and bought a new one the same year for $40 million. At number four, we have how she wouldn't shoot a commercial where she grew up. We know from her song, Jenny from the Block, that she grew up rough, and she makes it a point to share her story of triumph and overcoming the odds. But when she refused to film in the Bronx, people were taken aback. She makes it a point to seem like she still has strong connections to her roots there, but refuses to film there. It could definitely be for her own safety, but if she was so deeply connected, you would think she'd want to go back. She was actually filming a Fiat commercial and they wanted to tap into that part of her, but she would only film in LA and they required a body double to film the scenes that were in the Bronx. I suppose no matter how deep your roots go, fame overcomes that. At number three, we have her very specific food demands. We know that the diva makes very specific demands and that doesn't stop when it comes to food or drink. When she was touring back in 2010, she required a completely white room with top to bottom furniture and everything all in white. 
She also required no catering in the actual room aside from the drinks, which included, but were not limited to, room temperature refrigerated Gatorade, Coca-Cola regular and diet, a lemon wedge with smart water specifically, fruit punch, and plain M&Ms. If they weren't plain, she'd freak out. Also, if she was going to receive a piece of apple pie, it had to be a la mode, or else she'd flip her lid as well. As if it wasn't hard enough to keep her happy, any food catering was to be left outside the door by the person bringing it. Another insane food demand occurs is that when she orders breakfast at a hotel, it needs to be piping hot no matter when she arrives or when it arrives to her room. And if it's not, she'll throw a fit. But it's not just a regular order either. It's scrambled eggs, bacon, pancakes, and the rest of the nine yards. At number two, we have her specific relationship requests. If you want to be with her, you've got to jump through hoops to prove you're worth the position. When she was still with Alex Rodriguez, she claimed she really loved his physique. But if he ever lost it or let himself go, she wouldn't be able to stay with him because that was a deal breaker. And she wouldn't marry him if it wasn't a guarantee that he would remain his shape. And that's not all. She also said that if they were going to be together, he was banned from speaking to any woman under the age of 40 in case he tried to get any ideas. She was 49 at that time, and him having a conversation with someone younger than her made her jealous and uncomfortable. And last but not least at number one, we have how she claims she isn't a diva. You know you've become fully out of touch when you do everything on this list and still claim you aren't a diva. She says she doesn't deserve the title of being a diva because she doesn't feel like she is, which makes next to no sense. But her support for that claim is that she worked very hard to get where she is and that she's still a hardworking person because a hardworking person absolutely can't be a diva with her private jet and her seven limos and her diamond encrusted headphones. Getting somewhere big in life when you come from nothing is a big deal and it's really inspiring to young and upcoming artists. But when you've become that desensitized to your lavish lifestyle, maybe it's time to do some proper soul searching. And that has been our list for today. If you liked this video or think we should have added something, you can let us know in the comments down below. And if you're looking for daily celebrity content, you should subscribe to the channel. This has been Beyond the Screen, and thank you for watching. Lopez is known as a Hollywood triple threat that can act, sing, and dance. This has made her a true superstar in the entertainment business. But all those accolades have clearly gone to JLo's head, and other celebrities have had to warn us about her diva attitude in the past. First up, of course, we have Mariah Carey. Even if you're not familiar with many of JLo's feuds, I'm sure you know that Mariah Carey hates her. That's because Mariah has not been shy about throwing shade in her direction. These two have been feuding ever since JLo started to make music and started to steal her shine. Then when Mariah was asked about Lopez in an interview, she famously replied, quote, I don't know her. Years later, when Andy Cohen brought up the beef on his show, Watch What Happens Live in 2014, Jennifer Lopez played the whole thing off saying, quote, I don't have a feud against her at all. I know from back in the day, I've read things that she said about me that were not the greatest, but we have never met. Like we don't know each other. I would love to meet her and I would love to be friends with her. But then JLo was a little more savage on the Wendy Williams show when asked about the feud in 2016. Lopez said, quote, she's forgetful, I guess we've met so many times. But Carrie doubled down in another interview where she added that she still doesn't know Jennifer Lopez. When Mariah had a mishap of her own during a disastrous New Year's Eve performance, Lopez took a break from the high road and liked an extremely shady tweet about Mariah. The tweet said, quote, ever seen an accident you couldn't take your eyes away from? That was her tonight. If you're wondering where this feud started, it all goes back to Mariah's ex-husband and music executive, Tommy Mottola. After getting married in 1993, Carrie divorced Mottola in 1998 because he was very controlling. And to get back at her, Mottola started up JLo's career and did everything possible to make JLo a star, instead of Mariah. JLo sampled a number of Mariah-esque songs, there were even allegations she straight up copied some of Mariah's songs, but tried to make them more of a hit all because of Matola. But Mariah knows she still came out on top, adding quote, after all that sh Lover Boy ended up being the best selling single of 2001 in the United States. So basically the whole feud is over career competition and the fact that Lopez was in cahoots with Carrie's controlling ex. 
Rosie Perez You'd think that JLo and Rosie Perez would be great friends, considering how much they have in common. Both women are dancers, are Puerto Rican, and grew up in New York. But the pair are not close, and it would be more accurate to say that they actually hate each other. According to Perez's 2014 memoir, Handbook for an Unpredictable Life, she has plenty of negative stories to share about JLo. In her memoir, Perez shared a story from the set of In Living Color. She wrote about Lopez, quote, all of the girls were coming into my office complaining how she was manipulating wardrobe, makeup, and me, all to her advantage. And added she was acting like, quote, some ghetto b screaming and pounding her chest. Chelo ended up leaving that show after two seasons, but the feud between the pair continued, and Perez claimed that Lopez would speak negatively about her whenever she got the chance. Even worse, Lopez was allegedly two-faced. She would talk trash behind Perez's back, but be nice to her face. Brandy In the midst of the Mariah and JLo feud, Brandy publicly supported Mariah, making it clear she does not like JLo. In July of 2017, Brandy took to Instagram to share a photo of herself hugging Mariah Carey with the caption, hashtag she knows me. An obvious reference to Mariah's infamous, I don't know her comment about JLo. All the comments were flooded with people speculating over the caption, and the consensus quickly became that the photo was a dig at JLo. However, Brandy later addressed the caption, writing, quote, Oh my god, what happened? I swear to goodness, I didn't know what the fuss is about. I love this pic, and now everyone thinks I'm throwing shade. At who? This is funny. Can't take this one down, I love this picture, and whenever I'm throwing shade, it's not questionable, you know that I am. Later adding that Mariah does in fact know her. Mariah supported the post by commenting, quote, I sure do. Even though Brandy is trying to convince us it's nothing shady, I honestly don't believe it. Next up, Nicki Minaj. It's long been rumored that Jennifer Lopez is a huge diva, and the fight that her and Nicki Minaj had while on American Idol brought up both of their diva sides. In 2012, Lopez was a judge on American Idol while Nicki came on to perform, and things got tense fast. After Nikki finished performing, she went over to the judge's table and asked, quote, I was hoping maybe I could come back and be a guest judge. J-Lo, can you scoot over a little bit? J-Lo then responded, quote, I don't know if there's enough room for both of us. Then Minaj took it up another notch backstage when she said, quote, she didn't seem to be having it, but she's gonna have it. But she later added, quote, we were just joking around. But it's clear the bad blood is still there. When Lopez performed at the 2015 AMAs, she sang a part of Minaj's song, Anaconda. But I don't think Nikki got the memo that it was going to be happening, because when the camera panned to Nikki, she did not look happy. Fans totally saw the shade and started tweeting about it that night. Rihanna Rihanna and JLo started feuding right around the time that JLo was seen getting cozy with Rihanna's ex, Drake. This all happened in 2016, when JLo and Drake took a photo backstage at JLo's concert. Once the photos came out, everyone assumed that they were dating, which probably got the attention of his exes. A lot of fans felt the whole thing was most likely a publicity stunt, but Rihanna took the rumors pretty seriously, and lashed out online because of it. A source said at the time that Rihanna suffered, quote, the ultimate betrayal, and dubbed Lopez desperate and a traitor. This was because Rihanna and JLo were really tight at one point, and Rihanna even got support from JLo during rough times with Drake. Then in December of 2016, Rihanna unfollowed JLo on Instagram, making her stance very clear. Jenna Dewan When the pair started alongside each other on World of Dance, they seemed like they got along great. Lopez was a producer and a judge, while Dewan was a host and mentor on the show. But sources revealed that when the camera stopped rolling, the women hated each other. One source said about their relationship, quote, Jenna can't stand Jen's over-the-top theatrical fakery. Jen never fails to ham it up when the cameras are rolling, and she hijacks the show. It seems she'd prefer if Jenna just stayed in the background. The insider continued that JLo is a micromanager who tells everyone else what to do. Because of all her input, Jenna felt excluded and felt like her voice was not heard. Although there is a chance that this feud is not accurate because when Dewan's team was asked about the feud rumors, they denied them. Ojani Noah Jennifer Lopez has been married three times before. Her first and shortest marriage was to Cuban waiter Ojani Noah. Although their relationship ended in 1998, it's clear that Noah cannot stand her. And whenever asked about Lopez, he does not hold back his negative feelings. Back in 2006, he was actually set to release a juicy tell-all book about Lopez called The Unknown Truth, a passionate portrait of a serial thriller. But before it was set to be published, Lopez was able to stop it with a lawsuit. She argued that publishing the book broke their confidentiality agreement, and the courts agreed. From that lawsuit, she won $545,000 in damages, and Noah was forbid from criticizing or casting in a negative light or otherwise disparaging Lopez. Noah's name was brought up once again when he threatened to leak an intimate tape of the two of them on their honeymoon. 
Lopez then filed a $10 million lawsuit against him. When asked why the relationship ended, Noah blamed Lopez, saying, quote, I was looking forward to being with her for the rest of my life. It didn't happen. She made the choice of her career instead of me. And finally, Jennifer Lopez herself. Nobody has done more to warn us about JLo's sketchy behavior than herself. And some of the things she's done in the past are too terrible to ignore. Back when she tried to score a role in competition with actress Claire Danes, JLo said some harsh things about her competition, saying that Claire Danes does the quote, same thing with every character she does. Then Lopez bashed Winona Ryder, saying that she was not a big fan of her work. And finally, Lopez took aim at Gwyneth Paltrow, saying, quote, Tell me what she's been in. I swear to God, I don't remember anything she was in. Some people get hot by association. I heard more about her and Brad Pitt than I ever heard about her work. Then in a different interview, Lopez decided to take aim at Madonna, specifically bashing Madonna's attempt at acting. Quote, do I think she's a great performer? Yeah. Do I think she's a great actress? No. Acting is what I do, so I'm harder on people when they say, oh, I can do that, I can act. I'm like, hey, don't spit on my craft. Aside from dishing out unnecessary shade to other celebrities, Lopez also has a reputation for being incredibly rude to service people. One United Airlines employee told the press how much of a diva she was during her flight. Apparently, he asked if she wanted a drink, and she replied, quote, I just said, what can I get you to drink? But Jennifer refused to even acknowledge me. She turned her head away and told her personal assistant, please tell him I'd like a Diet Coke and lime. Even though the stewardess was trying to serve her what she wanted, she refused to look and made her assistant speak for her. It's so ridiculous and an unnecessary power play. But this interaction is nothing compared to the maid that was fired for asking JLo for an autograph. The maid later spoke with media and said she asked JLo's two assistants who rejected the autograph. Then a day later, the hotel said that Lopez complained about the incident and that maid was fired. So that's all for the list, guys. Let me know your thoughts below. But before I go, I'm gonna shout out some comments from top 10 celebrities who lost everything in 2021, part three. Savannah said, I cannot imagine being so out of touch financially that I end up spending so much money on wine, I had to file for bankruptcy. Have they ever heard of Barefoot Bubbly? I love Barefoot, I love Barefoot Moscato. It's probably one of my favorite wines ever. But I can't even believe it, like you're going broke and then you buy super expensive wine that's like, these people are literally living in like a fantasy world. David Hodge said, Chappelle can't be canceled. He lost nothing, hashtag goat, kept his millions. I mean, that's definitely one way to look at it. I, he really did, like I think a lot of his personal reputation might be whatever you wanna say about it, but he's still making money, sells some of the highest watched specials ever. So I mean, no one can take that away from him. Then Zayim said, didn't Mike Richards also say the N word on wheel fortune to a black guy in the audience? I did not hear about that, but that is crazy. I mean, if that's true, it makes sense absolutely that he was you know, fired for both those incidences. All right guys, that's all for the list. I've been your host, Mackenzie Smith, and we'll catch you in the next one. Top 10 biggest Jennifer Lopez red flags we should have noticed. Hey, I'm your host Bridget Shields and let's get right into the video. Number 10, sharing the stage. JLo didn't hold back when it came to her opinion on sharing the stage with Shakira at the 2020 Super Bowl halftime show. In her newly released documentary called Halftime, she labeled it as the worst idea in the world. Quote, if it was going to be a double headliner, they should have given us 20 minutes. That's what they should have effing done. Basically, it turns out that Jennifer was frustrated with the NFL for booking two headliners and making them share the same amount of time that any solo performer would receive, as opposed to doubling it and giving the women extra time to shine. As a result, fans slammed the artist for coming off as entitled. While it's true that they only gave the performers six minutes each, the action-packed show garnered immense praise from fans across the globe, with many fans commending the women for showcasing their Latin heritage so brilliantly. What JLo was really mad about though is that previous solo headliners like Beyonce and The Weeknd received 14 minutes to perform. But judging by her complaints, it's clear that she feels offended that they asked her to share the stage at all. Number 9. Cheating Allegations Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck have had an on-again, off-again romance that has been going on since the 2000s, with fans even nicknaming the couple Benefa. I mean, these two just got married this year, after they first got engaged nearly two decades ago. But the timeline of their relationship is a 
huge red flag and included alleged cheating. So in July of 2002, Lopez filed for divorce from her second husband, Chris Judd, citing irreconcilable differences. But this news broke just months after Lopez had wrapped the movie G. Lee alongside her then boyfriend Ben. Even though she vehemently denied cheating rumors, Ben took out an ad in The Hollywood Reporter gushing about Lopez before her divorce wasn't yet finalized. In fact, even Chris Judd's father, Larry, spoke out against the couple and accused JLo of being unfaithful to his son. He insinuated that the affair started during the filming of G. Lee. Quote, I thought Mr. Affleck would honor a married woman and not just go right into the trailer. And added that she'd be happier if she'd just tell the truth and no one in her little circle is going to say one negative thing to her. But we'll never really know the truth of what happened. Number eight, music theft. The star has been accused of stealing and borrowing background tracks and vocals from other artists for years. One of the stars who accused her of doing this was Usher in 2005. He claimed that she stole a song that he cast aside while recording his hugely successful album called Confessions. Usher claimed that JLo's single Get Right is actually a re-recorded version of Ride, a song that he co-wrote the year before which was only available online. He said, quote, I hate it, but I'd better get some of the publishing rights or else. I didn't put it on my album because I couldn't get it right, but I didn't expect JLo to just take it. And apart from being accused of stealing the same sample song that Mariah Carey used for Loverboy, JLo was also given songs that were initially intended for Ashanti, which is why a lot of people claim what happened between the two artists was straight up music theft. In September of 2001, Lopez released I'm Real from her second studio album, JLo, that she worked on with Irv Gotti. But the song was already recorded and mixed with Ashanti's vocals, which is why you can still hear her background vocals in Lopez's version. Number seven, makeup artist feud. Scott Barnes, who worked for JLo for the past 20 years, has had to deal with so much of the star's crazy hot and cold behavior. In the mid 2000s, the star essentially banished her longtime makeup artist, Scott Barnes after rumors surfaced that someone had leaked info to the press about her and Mark Anthony's secret marriage ceremony. Speaking on the Jeff Probst show in 2012, when asked about how JLo treated him, he said, quote, it was like I had the plague. But interestingly enough, eventually she ended up giving Barnes his old job back again after learning the truth but apparently failed to apologize for being so cold and ruthless towards him. I mean, she literally cut him off without a word and blamed him for the leak without even confronting him. Barnes went on to say, quote, I went right back to work with her and we just never spoke about it again, which is even weirder. The funny thing is her celebrity makeup artist would go on to work with her for another six years and insisted that they remain on good terms despite the fact that she ghosted him and didn't even apologize for it. Number six, the Mark Anthony romance. Celebrity gossip magazines could not get enough of the power couple in the early 2000s. They were absolutely everywhere and it seemed like fans loved the pairing. But their beginnings as a couple were super questionable to say the least. Anthony married former Miss Universe Dianara Torres in 2000, while Lopez was dating Ben Affleck roughly around the same time. But the on again off again couple picked their romance back up while Anthony was still married to Dianara. So less than a week after Anthony's divorce was finalized, the couple surprised fans by getting married in a small, casual ceremony in her Beverly Hills home in early June. It really begs the question of whether or not JLo was some kind of homewrecker because the timeline of the rekindled relationship seems really off. I mean, he actually broke Dianara's heart and she said, quote, you go through hell. I cried until there were no tears left until I was numb. I didn't want to eat. I didn't care to get dressed or take a shower. I just wanted to lie there. Anthony's feelings for Jennifer might have been there all along because the two had history, but he should have put way more thought into who he chose to marry in the first place. So in a way, they're both at fault here. Number five, insensitive comments. To give you some background on why everyone felt that JLo was trashing belly dancing. So a part of the 2020 Super Bowl performance featured young dancers sitting in glowing cages, which many people assume represented the immigrant children in cages at the US border. But she apparently had a hard time convincing the NFL to do this and said, quote, I'm trying to give you something with substance, not just us out there shaking our effing asses and effing belly dancing. She went on to say that she wants something real, something that's gonna make a statement, something that's gonna say we belong here and we have something to offer. Now, if you're confused about why that was so controversial, essentially she compared the art of belly dancing to just shaking your butt for the hell of it. In fact, that particular line was shared across Twitter and people were big mad. It was just 
a little culturally insensitive to say, considering the fact that the dance has long been associated with Middle Eastern cultures, and it's something that Shakira has become known for, using it to channel her father's Lebanese Syrian Arab roots. Number four, avoiding the Bronx. This one train wreck of an ad campaign led people to openly mock both Chrysler and Jennifer Lopez. The central premise of the ad was that sometimes JLo will drive through her old hood in the South Bronx in a Fiat 500 just to stay inspired. Although it sounds ridiculous, the marketing campaign obviously tried to draw on the singer's famous Jenny from the Block era. Most people recognize the song in which she pays tribute to growing up in the Bronx, which had been a solid part of her image since the 90s. In fact, the singer even titled her debut album On the Six, which is a clear reference to the New York subway train. A press release at the time even stated that she would be traveling through the streets of Manhattan to the Bronx where she grew up. But the ad backfired when the smoking gun reported that Lopez never actually went to the Bronx to film the ad and that a body double stand-in was used instead, calling it, quote, such a breathtaking assemblage of urban cliches. And that was putting it lightly. Number three, the movie line interview. The infamous movie line interview in 1998 that could have almost ruined J Lo's career was truly worse than you can imagine. She was 27 at the time and fresh off the success of her film Selena. She basically decided to trash all the other celebrities that were big at the time and tried to trivialize their career and contribution to the industry. In fact, when asked about Madonna, she actually said, quote, do I think she's a great performer? Yeah. Do I think she's a great actress? No. Acting is what I do. So I'm harder on people when they say, oh, I can do that, I can act. And I'm like, hey, don't spit on my craft. It was so ironic because Jayla would go on to do both music and acting for the rest of her career, and critics also trashed her acting on the big screen. Also, at the time, Madonna had been a star for a lot longer than JLo, so there was no real comparison there. And when Gwyneth Paltrow was brought up, Jennifer almost seemed to laugh and made it clear that she didn't take her fellow actress's career seriously. Quote, tell me what she's been in. I swear to God, I don't remember anything she was in. Some people get hot by association. I heard more about her and Brad Pitt than I ever heard about her work. Yikes. Number two, accusations of racism. 20 years ago, Lopez was approaching full actualization as an entertainer, but a single from her second album, JLo, almost derailed her career entirely. The Murder Inc. remix of I'm Real, which features Ja Rule and Own Radio in 2001, was ruined by the N bomb that she drops in her final verse. The issue was that the song was an instant hit, so much so that 10 years later, in 2011, Billboard gave it the sixth spot on its full. 40 biggest duets of all time list. But rightfully so, people were outraged by her use of the loaded term. Not only because she's a Latina artist, but at her level of success, where she has a platform and sets an example to young fans, using such a derogatory word is at best offensive. But as the accusations of racism started to mount against the star, she eventually spoke out to defend her actions on the Today Show. Quote, for anyone who thinks or suggests that I'm racist is really absurd and hateful to me. Although many people think this is not an excuse, it was later revealed that the track was actually written by Ja Rule himself, and apparently he encouraged her to say it. And number one, Fire the Maid. This one is really, really indefensible. Jennifer Lopez allegedly got a German hotel maid fired for asking for an autograph. Fredo Dadge was a staff member at the Luxury Melia Hotel in Dusseldorf, Germany, during Lopez's stay in 2012. She was a big fan of JLo and worked up the courage to knock on the star's hotel door in Dusseldorf to ask for an autograph and was promptly turned away. Prey claims that she was relieved from her post the day after the incident. She told the son, quote, I am an incredibly big fan, so I took all my courage and rang the doorbell to get an autograph, but I was rejected by two assistants at the door. A day later, the cleaning company that employed me at the hotel called and said that Ms. Lopez had complained. I was fired right there on the phone. If the incident really happened, and it's hard to ignore the irony when you remember that Jennifer played a hotel maid in the movie Made in Manhattan. After receiving a rightful amount of backlash, the pop star wrote on Twitter, quote, come on, thought you knew me better than this, would never get anyone fired over an autograph. First I heard of this was on Twitter, hashtag hurtful. Well, that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe.
Hey, how's it going? I'm your host, Bridget Shields, and let's take a look at the top 10 celebrities who hate Jennifer Lopez. Number 10, Mariah Carey. This celebrity feud is legendary, so it's only fair that we start off with this one. JLo and Mariah Carey have been at each other's throats since the early 2000s. In fact, most people remember the iconic line that Mariah told a German reporter, I don't know her. Although it sounds hilarious, Mariah has maintained her negative opinion of JLo all these years. For example, an interviewer once asked her what she thought about Beyonce and Jennifer Lopez and she responded by saying that they don't even belong in the same category for a very specific reason. Well, it's hard. You can't really put those two people in the same category because one is in a really different generation. They just started singing later. But when you talk about Beyonce, I think she's wonderful. She's great. She's a talented person. But it seemed that she forgot to compliment JLo as well. A few years later, Carrie spoke to Andy Cohen and doubled down on her comments comments, quote, I don't know her, what am I supposed to say? It looks like it'll take a miracle for these two iconic performers to ever be on good terms. Number 9, Rihanna. There are several celebrities who can't stand Jennifer Lopez, but one of the biggest critics of the iconic singer is Rihanna. These two former best friends had a serious falling out in 2016, for the oldest reason in the book. They were fighting over the same guy. Before the feud began, Rihanna and JLo were friendly to each other and had no reason for animosity. But trouble started brewing right after Rihanna and Drake broke up. They had had a summer fling that same year which was pretty casual but it definitely still counted. Girl code was broken when JLo started getting close with Drake almost immediately after. But the feud really became public when Jennifer posted a photo of her and Drake hanging out backstage at her show in Las Vegas with the caption hashtag love him. In fact, the two were even spotted hugging and fans quickly realized that some Something very shady was happening. An inside source close to the star said that Riri felt like she had suffered the ultimate betrayal and called Jennifer's behavior desperate. It must have been accurate because in December of 2016, she suddenly unfollowed Lopez on Instagram. Number 8, Gloria Estefan. Cuban American superstar Gloria Estefan was originally supposed to be performing at the 2020 Super Bowl alongside fellow Latina pop stars JLo and Shakira, but after seeing JLo's new documentary, called Halftime, where the singer went on a rant about having to share the stage with Shakira, Gloria put her comments on blast. She didn't seem to agree that it was the worst idea ever to have the artist share the stage, and explained why Lopez got it wrong on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen. Quote, Look, this is the bottom line. You have very little time, like 12 minutes or something, to get things on and off the set. So could you do it with one person? Yes. But I think they wanted to throw a Miami and Latin extravaganza and they tried to pack it in as much as possible. The Grammy Award winner also confirmed that she chose not to participate for a reason, seeing as JLo got so worked up about having two people perform. Quote, okay, and imagine what JLo would have said if I was the third. I literally would come out, Donna, shake your booty and out. But she went on to insist that it was their moment and that she didn't want to go on a diet in December anyway. Number seven, Nick Cannon. The Wild and Out star took a cue from his ex-wife Mariah Carey's famous phrase to throw shade at Jennifer Lopez during his guest appearance on The Wendy Williams Show. While discussing Hollywood crushes during the Hot Topic segment, the 41-year-old first named Carey, his ex-wife and mother to their two twins, Moroccan and Monroe. Quote, number one, Mariah, the amazing mother, superstar, singer. He then went on to name Halle Berry and Naomi Campbell as his second and third choices. A producer then suggested J Lo as an option and he just responded with, I don't know her. After the audience erupted into laughter, the host added, that was a joke for the lambs. Shout out to the lambs. As Carrie refers to her fans as the lamely. Cannon made it clear who he supports in the ongoing Battle of the Divas, and naturally he sided with Carrie, so we can't really fault him for that. It's been a bit of a running joke for years that Mariah wasn't kidding and didn't actually know JLo personally when she gave that interview, but it was too late to clear the air as the classic I don't know her line has gone down in history as one of the best ways to shade someone. Number 6, Rosie Perez. Both Jennifer Lopez and Rosie Perez have served as inspirations to the Latin community for over two decades, but they haven't always gotten along. They met back in 1991 during an open casting call for In Living Color. At the time, Perez was the show's choreographer, and Lopez was auditioning to become a member of the dance troupe known as the Fly Girls. 
Her, her audition was unsuccessful, but Perez saw a star quality in JLo and actually pulled some strings to get her in. But after she was in the group, it became clear that Lopez didn't get along with her fellow dancers. According to Perez, she was labeled as a diva right away. All of the girls were coming into my office and complaining how she was manipulating wardrobe, makeup, and me, all to her advantage. Perez said that at first she didn't believe it, but then JLo screamed at her saying, I know I'm good, I'm better than any of these girls and you know it. What's worse is, after JLo left the show and made it big in the music industry, she went on talk shows trashing her former choreographer. Perez also implied that JLo ghosted her. Quote, I called her up, she wouldn't pick up. Frustrated, I left her an irate message on her answering machine. Instead of calling me back and hashing it out like friends do, she went on a major talk show and reiterated my lashing. Number five, Brandy. Brandy has had a public feud with Jennifer Lopez since 2017. And according to Kiwi Report, she made made it clear that she supports Mariah Carey going against JLo too. Basically, she posted a photo of herself on Instagram hugging Carey with the hashtag she knows me. The caption was super perfect and a great reference to that famous I don't know her comment. So the whole thing tells us that Brandy is totally teaming with Mariah. Brandy's post exploded on social media and Lopez fans immediately took offense to it. Mariah saw the backlash and chimed in to Brandy's photo commenting with a simple I sure do. But the singer was quick to defend herself from hate comments and edited the caption shortly after posting it with quote, oh my god, what happened? I swear to goodness, I don't know what the fuss is about. I love this pic and now everyone thinks I'm throwing shade. At who? This is funny, can't take this one down. I love this picture and whenever I'm throwing shade, it's not questionable. You know that I am. She totally doubled down on dissing Jennifer and siding with Mariah, adding quote, also, I've met her several times. Like the several seats that should be taken, she does know me. Number four, Nicki Minaj. These two have allegedly been feuding since 2012. It all started when Nicki was performing one particular. It all started when Nicki was performing on one particular episode of American Idol at the same time that JLo was sitting on the judge panel. In a rather awkward moment, Nicki asked if she could come back on the show as a guest judge and asked JLo to scoot over. As a Latina artist hit back, she said, I don't know if there's room for both of us. It was one of those joking moments that seemed like there was something else behind it, but nevertheless, the two seemed to be just joking around. Even though Nicki told a reporter backstage, Quote, she didn't seem to be having it, but she's gonna have it. Okay, so now we're jumping to 2015, when fans swear that Nicki shaded JLo for performing her song at the American Music Awards. As she was performing a small part of Anaconda, the camera cut to Nicki in the audience, looking less than happy with the rendition. The clip showed her emotionless face and made it seem like she didn't approve of the way her song was being used. Number three, Ryan Seacrest. This incident gives Ryan every reason to hate JLo because it's pretty bad. Ryan Seacrest worked alongside the singer on American Idol and the two quickly became friends. But all that seemingly changed when the talk show host revealed that he flew down to Miami to celebrate her milestone 50th birthday, only to be denied entry at the door. Ouch. He recalled the whole story on Live with Kelly and Ryan and explained that he flew down from New York for only a few hours because he had to make it back in time for the next morning show. But when he finally arrived, the doorman told him, you're not on the list, to which he responded, clearly there's a mistake. She invited me personally. But upon being denied, he checked the list and couldn't find his name. The doorman just asked him to wait, made a quick call and was able to confirm that Seacrest was indeed on the guest list. But the host went on to say that he he was the first person there and no one really got turned up until after he left. It would have certainly been a little embarrassing to say in the least. Number two, Cameron Diaz. Throughout the years, Jennifer Lopez has been known to speak negatively about her fellow actors and it looks like it may have come back to bite her. During an interview in the late 90s, JLo explained that Cameron Diaz was just a lucky model who was given opportunities. She did mention that Diaz can be good when directed, but Lopez's past comments about Cameron's career allegedly made things super awkward between them when they were 
when they both had to buckle down and work together in the 2012 comedy What to Expect When You're Expecting. Several anonymous sources on the set of the film claim that the two stars did not get along at all during the shoot. In fact, it was reported that Cameron said the singer was a nightmare to work with. Quote, she even said that Jen should stick to her day job, meeting American Idol and singing. According to the insider, JLo demanded to eat at specific times, no matter what, and stops working when it suits her. And she had her assistant run over to her with food. This is what allegedly drove Cameron crazy. Another source claimed that the co-stars actively avoided one another while filming, and tensions were thick. Number one, Ojani Noah. The former couple were married on February 22, 1997, and got divorced barely one year later, in January of 1998. It was so long ago that you would think Ojani has moved on from the relationship, but apparently he's still holding on to a bit of resentment. In fact, Jennifer's former flame was out to make a buck off their brief marriage by trying to expose revealing videos from their honeymoon. Ojani was even hauled into court after he started planning a tell-all movie based on the revealing home footage called How I Married Jennifer Lopez, The JLo and Ojani Noah Story. The result? Well, she sued him for a whopping $10 million and demanded a permanent court order blocking her ex from making any videos public. Ajani also threatened to write a tell-all book unless he was paid $5 million by the singer. His unpublished book alleges that JLo had multiple affairs, including one with Mark Anthony, during the 11 months that they were married. But a judge was not having it and awarded her $545,000 in damages and quashed the book, ruling that it violated a 2004 deal not to publish details of their relationship. Her team calls the movie an outrageous attempt to make money and received substantial compensation. So it's clear that he's still a little bit bitter. Well, that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video. Despite all of her notable accomplishments, JLo hasn't always been very popular with her fellow celebs. As it turns out, she has in fact been making quite a few enemies in Hollywood throughout her career. Hi, I'm your host Bridget Shields and here are just some of the stars who have beef with Jennifer Lopez. Madonna. Superstar Madonna has been in the game since the 80s and established plenty of enduring relationships with other entertainers who've come before and after her. But that doesn't mean she hasn't had her moments where she's thrown someone the cold shoulder. In this case, Jennifer Lopez definitely deserved it because she dissed Madonna's whole career in that infamous movie line interview in 1998. Lopez was 27 at the time and fresh off the success of her film Selena. It was then that she decided to boast about her own talent in comparison to Madonna. Quote, do I think she's a great performer? Yeah. Do I think she's a great actress? No. She also added, quote, acting is what I do. So I'm harder on people when they say, oh, I can do that. I can act. I'm like, hey, don't spit on my craft. Those comments were pretty bad considering that Madonna has been a star for a lot longer than JLo and at the time of the interview there was almost no comparison between them. It seems like Madonna held on to those remarks for quite some time because in 2009 she went on David Letterman and implied that Lopez tries to copy her by studying her looks on stage. Gwyneth Paltrow. At the time, Lopez was still fresh off the success of Selena and Anaconda, and she was explaining how she felt she was grouped into what she called the bottom of the A-list actresses. Paltrow was a star on the rise at the time, with many films under her belt such as Seven, Great Expectations, and Shakespeare in Love, which earned her a Best Actress Oscar in 1999. When Lopez was asked about Paltrow, she almost seemed to laugh and made it clear that she didn't take her fellow actress's career seriously. Quote, tell me what she's been in? I swear to God, I don't remember anything she was in. Some people get hot by association. I heard more about her and Brad Pitt than I ever heard about her work. If you have the goods, there's nothing to be afraid of. If somebody doesn't have the goods, they're insecure. I don't have that problem. Although Paltrow took the high road and never publicly criticized the star, when JLo started dating her ex-boyfriend Ben Affleck, she was reportedly very upset about the pairing and said that she didn't think Jennifer is right for him. It's easy to see why she felt that way. Scott Barnes. 
If you want to see just how long Lopez can hold a grudge, just ask celebrity makeup artist Scott Barnes, who's worked for her for the past 20 years. It's important to note that not all of JLo's feuds and shade throwing has been directed towards the rich and famous. The star essentially banished her longtime makeup artist Scott Barnes after rumors surfaced that someone had leaked info to the press about her and Mark Anthony's secret marriage ceremony. Speaking on the Jeff Probst show in 2012, Barnes revealed that the woman he considered a friend cast him aside for an entire year until it was confirmed that someone else was responsible for the leak. Quote, it was like I had the plague. Interestingly enough, JLo did end up giving Barnes his old job back again after learning the truth, but apparently failed to apologize for being so cold and ruthless, which sounds exactly like something she would do. The celebrity makeup artist, who's also lent his talents to Hollywood stars, including Gwyneth Paltrow, added, quote, I went right back to work with her and we just never spoke about it again, which is even weirder. The funny thing is, Barnes would go on to work with her for another six years and insisted that they remained on good terms, despite the fact that she ghosted him. He wasn't even guilty of the leak, but she cut him out of her life for a whole year. Talk about insanity. Salma Hayek. In that same interview from 1998, Lopez did not enjoy being compared to Salma Hayek. Quote, We're in two different realms. She's a sexy bombshell, and those are the kinds of roles that she does. I do all kinds of different things. And as if trashing her career wasn't enough, the supremely confident Lopez also claimed that Hayek had been telling a few lies about the fact that she had been offered the lead role of Selena, the 1997 film based on the life of slain Texas born superstar Selena Quintanilla. She went on to say, quote, It makes me laugh when she says she got offered Selena, which is an outright lie. If that's what she does to get herself publicity, then that's her thing. The comments were incredibly rude and ignorant of JLo, even though she claimed they were taken out of context in an interview that she did a few years later. But in 2020, Selma Hayek opened up to Andy Cohen on Watch What Happens Live, saying that in the 90s, she was offered the role of Selena before Jennifer Lopez, but she turned it down. Quote, they offered it to me like a week after she died. It was a little distasteful. They were already planning on making this movie. So it goes to show you how gracious Selma Hayek is because she wanted to be respectful to Selena's passing. Ashanti. While Jennifer Lopez has landed herself several platinum selling hits since her rise to fame with her debut album, she is no stranger to causing controversy regarding how she ends up getting her songs. While Ashanti has never openly admitted to sharing a feud with Jennifer Lopez, the R&B songstress has certainly hinted that she was often overlooked because of the success. Aside from being accused of stealing the same sample song that Mariah Carey used for her song Loverboy in the same year, Lopez was also given songs that were initially intended for Ashanti, which left Ashanti feeling irritated given that she had just landed her first taste of success in the music industry around that same time. Then in September of 2001, Lopez released I'm Real, lifted from her second studio album with Gotti, but he eventually handed the track over to Lopez even though the song was already recorded and mixed with Ashanti's vocals, which is why you still hear her background vocals in Lopez's version. Ashanti said, quote, It felt bittersweet because I was really excited because it was with JLo, you know what I mean? But I was so mad at Irv because I was like, you know I wanted that record. The whole situation between the two stars always seems bizarre and unfair, and many people believe that JLo outright stole Ashanti's vocals and passed them off as her own. Usher. JLo and Usher had a pretty big feud in 2005 over alleged music theft. The star had been accused of stealing or borrowing background tracks and vocals from other artists for years, and Usher had something to say about this. He claimed that his R&B rival stole a song that he cast aside while recording the hugely successful album Confessions. Usher said that JLo's single Get Right is actually a re-recorded version of Ride, a song that he co-wrote last year which was only available online. When asked about the whole ordeal, the then 26 year old said, quote, I hate it, but I'd better get some of the publishing rights or else. I didn't put it on my album because I couldn't get it right, but I didn't expect JLo to just take it. In fact, this whole situation was partly due to producer Rich Harrison, who co wrote the track with Usher and later decided to use it during recording sessions for JLo's upcoming album Rebirth. 
using the exact same vocal pattern. So JLo's song, Get Right, is actually a reworking of a beat Usher had created for his own album. When he scrapped his song Ride, parts of it made it into Jennifer's track and created one of the biggest dance floor hits ever. At least Usher was vocal about it and as a result chose not to work with JLo for several years following. Howard Stern, the controversial radio host Howard Stern is JLo's biggest critic and just doesn't understand her appeal. He said so himself on his super popular radio show. Not only isn't he a fan of her music, but Stern has publicly claimed that Jennifer's been rude to him on multiple occasions, despite his friendship with people close to her, saying that he does not respect her stuck up attitude. One of the main reasons why Lopez will never go on the Howard Stern show is because he has attacked everything from her career choices to her appearance. Both were judges on America's Got Talent at the same time, and in a red carpet interview with HLN in 2012, he said that Jennifer Lopez was more interested in promoting her career than being a proper judge. Quote, it helped her career. She got very far. She suddenly got back on the charts and the show was good for her and it became more about JLo. In 2016, Howard compared JLo's music to that of a homeless woman who sang a nonsensical song and as a prank, Howard's staff took the song to pedestrians on the street and tried to pass it off as her latest hit. One of the harshest things he's ever said though was during an interview with JLo's ex P Diddy where he slammed her looks by claiming that Diddy got out at the right time due to her aging. Eva Mendes. There was a time where Eva Mendes and JLo comparisons were inevitable. Similar to Lopez, Eva's career began in the 90s. She started out featuring in music videos with stars like Will Smith, Aerosmith and Pet Shop Boys. They were both Latina actors making waves in the entertainment industry in the 2000s. They've both dated A-listers and starred in big budget blockbusters, delivering standout performances that stole the show. However, when these similarities were brought to Eva's attention, the actress was very offended at the idea and felt that it was insulting to be compared to Lopez at all. In fact, Eva even felt that her approach to acting was more serious than Lopez's in a major way and added that JLo manages her career like a business as opposed to caring about her art. Quote, I would like to think I will have a more serious career than JLo. We may be both of Latin origin, but that's where the comparisons stop. She manages her career like the head of a big corporation, whereas the only thing I care about is becoming the best actress possible. While Mendez has made it clear that she never respected JLo's career, at least her comments don't sound too personal and were probably made because she was just sick and tired of constantly being compared to the other Latina actress. Are there any celebrities we missed? Let us know in the comments below and as always, thanks for watching. What's up BTS, it's your host Michaela, and I'm here to break down the top 10 celebrities who refuse to work with Jennifer Lopez. But before we dive into the countdown, tell me in the comments below, what's your favorite JLo song? At number 10 we have Jennifer's dismissal of bad teacher actress Cameron Diaz when she made the comment that she believes Cameron is a quote, lucky model who's been given a lot of opportunities, and how she wishes she would have done more with them. In turn, Cameron made a statement that Jennifer's behavior on set was rather cold, as she pretty much ignored her. She also described Jennifer as being someone who was hard to work with. As a clapback, Cameron further pushed that JLo should stick to her day job of singing. However, in the same Jennifer interview, it wasn't just Cameron that she came for. She also took shots at fellow actresses Gwyneth Paltrow and Winona Ryder. For Gwyneth, Jennifer said, Tell me what she's been in? I swear to God, I don't remember anything she was in. Some people get hot by association. I heard more about her and Brad Pitt than I ever heard about her work. On Winona, Jennifer recalled, I was never a big fan of hers. In Hollywood, she's revered. She gets nominated for Oscars, but I've never heard anyone in the public or among my friends say, oh I love her. At number 9 we have radio show host and interviewer Howard Stern, whose reasonings for not liking JLo comes in many forms. For one, he hates her music. 
Howard's typical musical vibe is 90s rock and grunge rather than early 2000s pop. But not only does Howard not enjoy Jennifer's music, he's also bashed it in the form of jokes on numerous occasions despite his attraction to fairly few pop songs in the past. In summary, it was Howard Stern's show co-host Robin who made claims while they watched her on the floor music video that radio stations were hesitant to play the song since she hadn't been charting for a while. Apparently to further this point, he described that the relevance of JLo being a judge on American Idol kind of forced the song down consumers' throats. And Howard later accused Jennifer of being self-absorbed because the single debuted on American Idol. Howard further bashed her Super Bowl performance and even ridiculed Jimmy Fallon's praises for it as well. There was also the incident where Howard claims he spent the entirety of his run-in with his friend Mark Anthony, who was married to Jennifer at the time, being completely ignored. This further pushed the established reputation of Jennifer being a snotty diva. Howard's last straw was Jennifer's interview, where she was asked if she found Howard attractive and remained silent while expressing a puking expression. Since then, Howard has not let up on the insults about her attitude, music, and business choices whenever she's brought up on his show. At number 8, we have Gloria Estefan's shade to Jennifer for her halftime documentary spiel about performing with Shakira for the 2020 Super Bowl. When Gloria admitted she chose not to participate with no regrets, she blasted Jennifer's comments about their experience when she sat down with Andy Cohen on Watch What Happens Live in June. Quote, Imagine what JLo would have said if I was third. I literally would come out, done, shake your booty, and out. It was their moment. Plus, I didn't want to go on a diet in December. This was in light of JLo's reaction to Shakira co-headlining the sports event. Benny Medina said in the film that it was insulting of the Super Bowl to request two Latina artists when one had already historically done the work. Yet Jennifer was the one who was upset about splitting her time on stage, stating that they only had five minutes to sing all their desired songs accurately. Quote, We have to have our singing moments. This is the worst idea in the world to have two people do the Super Bowl. While Jennifer and Shakira communicated about their upcoming performance, Jennifer added, they said 12 minutes. I got a good confirmation that we could have an extra minute or two, so now we're at like 13, 14 minutes. I think Shakira, what we should have is you should have half the time and I should. If it was going to be a double headliner, they should have given us 20 minutes. That's what they should have effing done. At number seven, we have singer Brandy, who was apparently picking sides when the Lopez Carey feud was at its peak. Brandy had shared an Instagram photo of her embracing Mariah in 2017 with a short three word caption of hashtag she knows me. Brandy's followers were on her like water as soon as the post was uploaded, speculating that the caption had everything to do with Mariah's famously memed, I don't know her. In response, Brandy denied there being any drama, rearranging the captions and then say, I swear I don't know what the fuss is about. I love this pic and everyone thinks I'm throwing shade. At who? This is funny. Can't take this one down. I love this picture. And whenever I'm throwing shade, it's not questionable. You know that I am. Brandy also continued unapologetically with, I've met her several times like the several seats that should be taken. She does know me. And if things couldn't get any shadier, Mariah Mariah made sure to clear things up in Brandy's comments with a simple, I sure do. At number 6, we have JLo's first husband, Ohani Noah. Despite their marriage being short-lived and ending as of 1998, it seems Ohani still can't stand Miss Jenny from the block. Their 9-month marriage apparently wasn't all that great, as Ohani had been working hard to slander his ex-wife's name on a number of occasions. Back in 2006, Ohani published a tell-all titled The Unknown Truth, a passionate portrait of a serial thriller. JLo halted this project with a lawsuit and claimed that Ohani was breaking their confidentiality agreement. Jennifer won $545,000 in damages, and Ohani was given a court date which forbid him from criticizing, denigrating, casting in a negative light, or otherwise disparaging Jennifer. In the next three years, Ohani threw himself back into news outlets when he made threats to release a sexually suggestive video of Jennifer that was filmed during their honeymoon and resulted in another $10 million lawsuit. In 2016, his appearance on Million Dollar Matchmaker saw Ohani claiming he loaded the blame on Jennifer for their split and how he was looking forward to spending a lifetime with her before she chose her career over him. At number 5, we have former NBC World of Dance TV host and mentor Jenna Dewan, who sat on the panel with then-executive producer Jennifer. Although the two dancers and celebrities seemed fine during the 2017 reality dance competition tapings, their animosity behind the scenes apparently ran deep. An unnamed outlet source once stated on Jenna's behalf that Jenna, quote, can't stand Jen's over-the-top theatrical fakery, adding that Jen never fails to ham it up when the camera are rolling and she hijacks the show. It seems she'd prefer if Jenna just stayed in the background. Every situation, even off camera, is micromanaged by JLo, and Jenna feels very excluded. This alleged feud seemed to be squashed fairly quickly though when Gossip Cop reached out to a show producer and one of Jenna's reps and was informed that their reported beef was misleading. However, given Jennifer's past, can we really be sure of this? At number 4, we have actress Rosie Perez. She and Jennifer apparently had lifelong ties with one another that seemed great on the outside, but both Puerto Rican dancers raised in 
New York have zero love for each other according to Rosie's 2014 Handbook for an Unpredictable Life Memoir. In it, Rosie discusses working on In Living Color with Jennifer in a wickedly horrible light. Quote, All the girls were coming into my office complaining how she was manipulating wardrobe, makeup and me all to her advantage. Despite Jennifer dipping from ILC after two seasons, Rosie stuck with her words of Jennifer supposedly keeping the flame of their feud burning for years after they parted. The words on the pages of Rosie's book portrayed Jennifer to be a two-faced person who would crap on Rosie one minute but then act super sweet like nothing happened between them the next. At number 3 we have artist Rihanna who seemed to be unimpressed by Jennifer after the star posted herself chilling with Rihanna's on again off again reported love interest Drake backstage at her 2016 Winter Vegas show. Naturally Jennifer's snap captioned look who rolled up at my show tonight to say hi, hashtag love him, sparked massive dating rumors. And it probably didn't help that Jennifer uploaded a follow up pic of her and Drake bear hugging and looking overly comfortable snuggling up. While many were unconvinced about the headlines, Rihanna was seemingly not here for any of it. which is why she reportedly went on to dub Jennifer as a desperate traitor. According to an unnamed insider who spoke to Touch, Rihanna had felt like she experienced the ultimate betrayal by Jennifer, since they once had a tight knit bond where Rihanna could seek solace in Jennifer for her relationship. Rihanna did not publicly address their rumored issues, however, she did seem to throw some shade when she suddenly hit the unfollow button on JLo's Insta. At number 2 we have Nikki and Jennifer's heated back and forth jabs that started with an exchange during a 2012 American Idol episode, where Nikki performed and Jennifer was a judge. When the female rapper completed her set, she boldly asked, I was hoping maybe I could come back and be a guest judge. JLo, can you scoot over a bit? To which Jennifer immediately quipped, I don't know if there's enough room for the both of us. Nikki seemed to hold on to that comment when she attempted to smooth things over back with The Hollywood Reporter, saying, She didn't seem to be having it, but she's gonna have it. We were just joking around. However, in 2015, things were still just as messy. When Jennifer opened the American Music Awards, performing a medley of songs, which included Nikki's hit Anaconda, Nikki seemed to be unimpressed by her performance as the camera gave away her emotionless expression, which told us everything we needed to know as one fan hinted. Nikki came to Jennifer's defense at that point though when she fired back with a tweet to a fan explaining, I'm looking at my own face on the screen when I'm looking to the right. I turn back and look at her. At number 1 we have the iconic I don't know her rivalry that has been carried out for years now. This beef has been ongoing since the early 2000s, with both stars being repeatedly questioned on whether or not they actually like each other. It seems they can't really decide though. Host Danny Cohen brought up their beef on his show in 2014, where Jennifer nonchalantly played the situation off with, I don't have a feud against her at all. I've read things she said about me that were not the greatest, but we don't know each other. I would love to meet her and I would love to be friends with her. However, she told Wendy Williams the exact opposite in 2016 for her show, explaining, She's forgetful, I guess. We've met many times. Andy went straight to the source to speak with Mariah that same year, and in response, Mariah reiterated, I don't know her. What am I supposed to say? Jennifer, of course, took this as major shade, and when people were flaming Mariah for her quote disastrous New Year's Eve performance that winter, Jennifer threw some shade of her own by liking a post referring to Mariah's performance as a train wreck. It seems Mariah got the final laugh though because she made it rain shade in her 2020 memoir The Meaning of Mariah Carey, where she revealed her feud with Jennifer on top of slamming Jennifer's ex-husband and former CEO of Sony Music, Tommy Mottola, for allegedly attempting to ruin her career with Jennifer's help. Mariah claimed Tommy tried to sabotage the Glitter soundtrack, Firecracker, and pushed that the movie's lead single, Lover, did not go unnoticed by Sony executives. Mariah also added that Sony rushed to make a single for another female entertainer on their label. But rather than naming Jennifer in the allegation in her sampling of Firecracker on I'm Real that same year, Mariah just concluded with her infamous comment, finishing her statement with, After all that ish, Loverboy ended up being the best selling single of 2001 in the United States. That concludes today's BTS. Again, I've been your host, Michaela, and I'll see you all again really soon. Since Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck reunited their relationship and got married, it's been a pretty tense situation due to more than several factors. Hi, I'm Stacey Taylor, and today I'm counting down the top 10 reasons Jennifer Lopez will divorce Ben Affleck. So, what reasons do you think will cause Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck to split for good? And let us know in the comments below. Coming in at number 10 today, we have the Grammys argument. Seems like one TikToker is shutting down all the speculation that Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez seem to be upset with each other at the Grammys, probably to gain clout 
for her page, but whatever works, works. As she went on to share her experience as a seat filler at the Sunday show, where she sat in a temporary vacant seat next to the stars. While a video shows the couple having a little argument at the table, the TikToker would then say that there was more to the story as to why Ben was looking a little gloomy at the event. When the TikToker explained the situation, she would say, JLo was showing Ben Affleck her phone when she was like, oh my god, honey, look at this meme circulating about you. And apparently Ben was like, oh god, this again. Other than that moment, apparently the couple was actually really lovey-dovey throughout the show and that it never made her think that the couple was headed towards a divorce. However, in the video where it showed Jennifer looking at Ben telling him to stop, look more friendly, look motivated, prove otherwise, and it has us all wondering what he may have whispered in her ear that made her snap and we really need to interview everyone around them to get to the bottom of this question. Number 9. Schedules and Family Trouble is already brewing in JLo's and Ben Affleck's relationship and their hectic schedules could be the reason behind it, as it has forced them to spend a huge chunk of time apart. An inside source has lifted the lid on the couple's whirlwind romance, which has caused them to claim that the sudden change of Ben and Jennifer being miles apart has taken a toll on their relationship. Even before the two got married, just weeks leading up to the wedding, as both of their children started to feel unsettled. But the real factor that caused the tension between the two stars is their hectic schedules. With both having pretty successful careers, it has forced them to spend a huge chunk of their time apart, which has left Jennifer in tears at times as she misses Ben so much. The couple has also had to deal with the stress that comes with merging two families together. And now that the stress has started to form tensions between them. And while the world has been delighted at the fact that they got back together after almost two decades, their hectic schedules and family could lead to the ultimate breakup Hollywood has ever seen. Hey my little peaches, are you liking this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to that channel. Number 8. Motorcycle Collection Post honeymoon things are quickly beginning to turn sour between Ben and Jennifer as the newlyweds have been at odds and have been fighting non-stop over everything from Ben's bad habit to his clothing choices. However, back in October, Radar Online would learn that JLo even took a jab at her husband when she decided to get rid of Ben's beloved motorcycle collection. An inside source would then reveal to the media outlet that JLo even had Ben's most prized motorbike collection cleared out while they were away without even telling him as she thought it would be unsafe to do so. So she decided to completely blindside Ben on the matter. After Ben found out about the matter, he and JLo got into a pretty epic fight, which caused JLo to yell at him and she even pointed her finger, which caused the insider to tell the outlet makes people wonder if she mistakes him for a dog. Number 7. Not wearing a wedding ring? Back in January, according to rumors that were making headlines on social networks, they would claim that Ben no longer wears the engagement ring he has with Jennifer Lopez, which would leave fans to question if the pair was headed towards a divorce sometime soon. And to intensify these rumors even more, the actor would soon be shown hiding his left hand from the paparazzi while he was captured walking in the city of Los Angeles with a nice coffee wearing a blue puffer jacket. Not to mention the actor could also be seen rocking a depressed look as he wore glasses and hid his hand in his pocket. This would then start to generate all kinds of comments on social media networks since the couple celebrated not one but two weddings to celebrate their union. And now they are already making headlines as inside sources claim things aren't going so well between them. But being caught without your wedding ring isn't exactly a good look. Number 6. Getting Sober Back in January, a video would start to go viral on TikTok after it showed Ben Affleck talking about his addiction with alcohol in the past, while he went on to protest to Jennifer that he hasn't been drinking when they attended a party. In the clip, it would show Ben and Jennifer attending an after party for the Hollywood premiere of JLo's new movie, Shotgun Wedding, on January 18th. As Jennifer's hit track, Let's Get Loud is heard playing in the background, Jennifer is seen holding a wine glass as Ben yells over the music, I didn't drink anything, okay? Jennifer is then seen lifting the glass while maintaining eye contact with Ben as she cautiously takes a drink before placing it down as her husband shouts at Jen. As the video has started to go viral, it has sparked a major debate among users and a number of users would slam Jennifer as they suggested that she was being unsupportive to Affleck by drinking while others claimed that she was just testing the drink to see if there actually was anything in it as she was worried Ben is falling back into 
to his old alcohol addiction habits and she's scared he might enter into a rehab program again soon. Number five, the past. Today it seems like the world can't stop talking about Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck's reunion, but it seems like the pair's past might be coming back to haunt them as neither can trust each other due to their long history. When the pair first broke up after it was hinted Ben had some major chemistry with his on screen partner, Jennifer Garner, Ben would later call off his engagement with Lopez and Mary Garner. And in some interviews, it would prove that Ben causes more harm to the woman around him as he likes to later gush about them to the press and he often talks about how much he regrets causing them harm until everyone forgets how awful he truly was to them. As JLo claimed that the two broke up because of having a public relationship, it was really hard on them. She would also refer to the relationship as self-destructive and that Ben crushed her soul when he pulled out of the wedding that she took so much time to plan just to hit rock bottom when she found out he got garnered just shortly after. Not to mention Ben even chirped her to the press after he told the press that he blamed all his troubles on JLo and that Garner saved him. But now the tables have turned. It makes you wonder what part of their past still haunts them. Number four, bad habits. While Jennifer always tries to understand and support Ben through all of his problems, when she asks Ben to support and understand her, the actor simply just acts indifferent and only focuses on his feelings without caring about what his wife feels. Jennifer, as a result, has been left feeling a little sad because she fears that Ben might even fall back into his same old patterns. Ben, who has already gone to rehab several times due to various vices, has overcome a lot, but now he is smoking heavily and this is apparently a situation that Jennifer is not really pleased with. It's gotten to the point where she's even had to talk to Ben's team, where she has urged them not to give him any more cigarettes, but he has ignored his team and his wife on the matter and he's even been caught out in public sneaking in some smoke time, which has caused JLo to be on edge and she is now at the point she is losing hope on Ben fixing his bad habits and that this could be one of the reasons she files for divorce shortly. Number three, too hopeful. You know when they say if something is meant to be, it will come back to you? Well, that's exactly what happened to Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck. And while the couple seems to be true believers when it comes to that statement, they seem to be a little too hopeful when it comes to their relationship this time around. When the two first got back together, they saw the spark they knew they both had still, and they dove quickly back into their relationship. 17 years after, they went their separate ways and called off their engagement in 2004. And since they have gotten remarried, they spend a lot of their time talking about what went wrong in their past, which is hashtag a giant red flag. While both are really hopeful that their relationship this time around will last as they want to spend more time putting in effort and that they believe that they are both more mature and are on the same page, it just seems like they are too invested in each other's lives and they're focusing on all the problems instead of all the good that can come with this relationship. Number two, the long honeymoon phase. All good things can't last forever and it seems like JLo and Ben have finally reached the end of their extremely long honeymoon phase, which lasted longer than any other honeymoon phase. While he was caught whispering something into his wife's ear right before, JLo could be seen jerking away and snapping at him after a lip reader confirmed Jennifer said, stop, look more friendly, look motivated. Ben then responded by saying, I might. However, just before their public spat, they were in a six month honeymoon phase that just looked too unrealistic because no one is that gooey and love and happy. And if you are, something is lying deep within and you're hiding it and that's the scary part. It's like dating someone you know at the beginning and how they're like really nice and you know something's up and then six months later, they're a completely different person. And coming in at number one today, we have the gloomy reactions. Ever since Ben got with JLo, he's been looking pretty gloomy and every time he's caught out in public looking a little upset, he starts to go viral as his fans try to figure out what might be making Ben seem sad. You would think after dating Jenny on the block, you would be pretty upbeat, but just days after tying the knot, Ben was seen with JLo looking pretty angry, like someone had stolen his lunch money or even asked him to physically growl out loud. But since the emergence of sad Affleck started to go viral last January, the meme hasn't shown signs of slowing down and it's clear something concerning is going on with the star. Well, that's all for this video, my little peaches. Until the next one, remember to stay juicy.
by day, it seems like Hollywood is just done with supporting difficult actors to the point they've even started closing the door on them. Hi, I'm Stacey Taylor. And I'm Lauren. And today we're going to be counting down the real reason Hollywood won't cast Jennifer Lopez anymore. Oh, and don't forget to head over to IO for some more of the latest content. Number 10, the alleged racism. Jennifer and Ben Affleck tied the knot in a surprise wedding in Las Vegas and decided to have a bigger ceremony not long after. This time around, they opted to celebrate at Ben's 87 acre compound that is just outside of Savannah, Georgia. But this choice in venue sparked criticism that shouldn't be ignored. Called by the family as the big house, Ben purchased the home in 2003 and it features three separate homes within. The oyster house, the summer house, and the Greek revival style home. The listing agent said when talking about the home, every detail is historically accurate, from the plaster moldings to the heart of the pine floors. But it seems that because of being historically accurate in nature, it's left fans wondering. Commenters on social media began criticizing the couple for hosting a celebration at a plantation, which of course is a style of home that has association with some pretty horrible history. To make matters worse, Ben and Jen were aware of the dark history in his ancestral line. News One reported that seven years later, Ben issued an apology after requesting the PBS show Finding Your Roots withheld information about his plantation owning ancestor. This allegedly even led to PBS shelving the show. This left many fans wondering why the couple would choose this home at all as their wedding venue, as well as why they own it in the first place. Despite finding his roots and knowing some of his ancestors' dark past, many found this to highlight some problematic behavior of ignoring the dark history of some of the buildings. Though the house itself isn't true in time, the land is. The property was reportedly owned by a plantation manager and allegedly is an unmarked graveyard. Most assume that Jennifer was aware of this information prior to planning her wedding there, but, and this hasn't left a good taste in many fans' mouths about the couple since. Number 9. Talk smack about other actresses. When a reporter from Movie Line turned up at Jennifer Lopez's home to conduct an interview in 1998, he was greeted with what he described as being an orchestrated and deliberate scene. While JLo was being pampered by a number of different staff members doing her business, while she was getting a massage, she seemingly felt the need to let loose during the interview as she started taking swipes at a number of her industry rivals. When she was asked what she thought about the actresses of whom she was competing for roles for, she said the Romeo and Juliet star Claire Claire Danes does the same thing with every character she does. Despite the fact that they work together on the set of Oliver Stone's neo-noir crime thriller, you turn. Lopez then went on to say she was never really a big fan of the two-time Oscar nominee Winona Ryder, and she also went off on Gwyneth Paltrow, who would win Best Actress at the Academy Awards the following year by saying, tell me what she's been in. Jennifer then went on to tell the reporter in the infamous interview, I swear to God, I don't remember anything she was in. Some people get hot by association. I've heard more about her and Brad Pitt than I've ever heard about her work. Hey, my little peach. Are you liking this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and you know, subscribe to the channel. Number eight, bad acting. You can't deny Jennifer Lopez had some movie hits in the past, but lately fans are torn, questioning if she has just lost the touch. After failing to get a nomination for Best Supporting Actress in the movie Hustlers in 2020, fans took to social media to share their thoughts. The TV host Wendy Williams believed she was completely snubbed, saying, let me tell you something, Jen, you were robbed. They robbed you purposely because they're jealous of you. But some fans just didn't agree, speculating that it was her acting that was a direct result in the zero nominations. A fan wrote at the time, she has acted in 36 films but has never won an Oscar. Yeah, that's because they're all bad. They added, no one wants to tell her the truth. Hustlers was a terrible movie, and her acting was very one dimensional. Other fans seem to agree that maybe Jennifer has lost the sparkle that she did once have. On Reddit, when asked, what do you think of Jennifer Lopez, one user wrote, she had promise. Honestly, she has fallen prey to the fame game. She brought solid work for a couple films, but she is no longer a phenomenon or a rare talent. They even went on to add, she can fade with people taking very little notice. Things have a way of working themselves out. Harsh statements for sure, but what do you guys think? Are Jennifer's acting days behind her? Number seven, insults musicians. During another movie line interview, Jennifer also offered her opinion on fellow pop star Madonna's career when she claimed Madonna was good at the former, but not so good at the latter by saying, do I think she's a great performer? Yeah. 
Do I think she's a great actress? No, acting is what I do. So I'm harder on people when I say, oh, I can do that, I can act. I'm like, hey, don't spit on my craft. However, the queen of pop isn't the only musician Lopez has shaded, as there has been much speculation that JLo's short-lived relationship with Drake in 2016 was nothing but a publicity stunt. However, the fact that Rihanna, who had somewhat of a complicated relationship with the Canadian rapper, over the years unfollowed Lopez on Instagram after she was posted in a pic across the Grammy winner, it seems to suggest that there indeed was some truth to the coupling. Lopez then revealed that she and Drake were working on a song together, but working with JLo doesn't always end well, and Drake learned that the hard way after she dissed Drake during a live show in Las Vegas by telling the audience that he was nothing but a late night call for her. And we all wonder why he won't bring a nice girl home to his mom for once. Number 6 Insensitive Comments Jennifer Lopez was called out for some criticized comments made about her Super Bowl halftime performance in 2020. For the halftime show, JLo came together with Shakira for an iconic event. Despite having six minutes of performance times each, it received a huge amount of praise from the stars. However, after Jen's documentary, Halftime, came out, discussing some of the struggles of the show, a few fans took back their former praise. Not only did Jen brand the whole thing as the worst idea in the world, but she had some very specific views on a political aspect. It seems her organizers just weren't seeing eye to eye with her at the time. During her performance, she was surrounded by children sitting cross-legged inside a glowing cage. Many came to the conclusion that these glowing cages were intended to look like immigrant children being held in cages at the US detention centers. You're probably thinking, how could this be bad as this is a topic that should be more widely discussed? But it was her comments afterwards that got fans pretty heated. It seems the NFL was more reluctant to include this moment at all, which pushed JLo to fight back at the show's organizers in a heated phone call which was shown in her documentary. She said, I'm trying to give you something with substance, not just out here shaking our effing butts and effing belly dancing. She went on to say, I want something real, I want something that's going to make a statement. Not long after the documentary was released, a certain line about belly dancing found its way across Twitter. One Twitter user wrote, In a new documentary, JLo compared belly dancing to just shaking your butt. She said this type of dance and what Shakira offered wasn't culturally relevant enough to be shown on stage. They continued on by saying, This comes after she said she was not happy to share the stage with Shakira. She's bitter, loud, and wrong. Others even accused her of having an ethocentric mindset, where she believes her culture is superior to others. One other social media user wrote, To say that belly dancing, a Middle Eastern culture, has no substance is so ethocentric and perhaps a little racist. Number 5. Drives co-stars crazy Now, there's a list of actresses who have felt like Jennifer Lopez brings things a little too far on set. And one of those peoples on the list is Cameron Diaz, especially after Jennifer went on to diss her about her career to movie line by labeling Cameron as a lucky model who's been given a lot of opportunities to the point she wishes Cameron would have just done more with her talent. Jennifer's brutal assessment of Cameron's career trajectory reportedly made things a tad awkward for the pair when the actresses were both cast in the 2012 film What to Do When You're Expecting. On set sources would then reveal that the two on set just couldn't get along. Lopez then didn't endear herself to Cameron, who allegedly said the pop star was a nightmare to work with, as she once even said to Jen she should stick with her day job, meaning American Idol and singing, as an insider even claimed that Jennifer demanded to eat at specific times, no matter what, and she would even stop work to have her assistant run her over some small protein in a veg-based meal. This drove Cameron crazy. Details of their feud would soon become a hot topic after it appeared in Star Magazine, after a source claimed to the media outlet that the co-stars actively avoided one another by saying they don't interact much, but when they do, the tension is thick. And Jennifer just acts like, Cameron doesn't exist. However, when both actresses denied the riff while promoting the movie, it then caused critics to say this was ultimately just all planned. Number 4 Music Theft from her career in acting to her music career, it seems controversy seemed to follow her. Over the years, Jen has been accused of stealing songs from other prominent artists in order to gain more fame for her music quicker. Back in 2005, JLo released her fourth studio album, which was called Rebirth, though it seems to be received from some pretty mixed reviews. 
The song Get Right was pretty widely praised, and at the time, it was reported that the singer Usher was furious though, accusing Jen of using his music. He said at the time, I hate it, but I better get some of the publishing rights, or else. I didn't put it on my album because I couldn't get it right. But I didn't expect JLo to just take it. According to Usher, Get It Right was his song with the title Ride, and it was available to listen to, to show proof that it was her that just re-recorded a version of his own song. Not only that, but Jen was also accused of using Ashanti's vocals for her song I'm Real. She said at the time, you should always care about who you give credit to, regardless of what industry you're in. It's really important to give credit. Luckily, in the end, she did get credit, but still, it's not a very good look. Number 3 makes ridiculous demands. Most big musicians send riders when negotiating with a venue or organization prior to a gig, but if the stories are true, Jennifer Lopez has made some crazy diva demands over the last couple of years. As according to Huffington Post, JLo was all set to perform at the opening of the Indian Premier 2020 Cricket Tournament, which has a TV audience around 60 million people in 2013. But apparently, she lost the gig when IPL bosses found out that she was asking for a private plane. Numerous Numerous hotel rooms to accommodate all of her stylists and handlers, and the organization was so shocked to even point out they didn't even want to play ball with Jennifer and they would replace her with Pitbull. However, apparently those demands are nothing when you compare them to the impossible requests she made ahead of her medley performance at the World Music Awards in 2010. As the Mirror would report that the singer allegedly requested a helicopter to be on standby as well as a custom fitted speedboat and a pair of diamond encrusted headphones to drown out the sound of the boat motor. And her people have even requested that she had an entire floor of a hotel to herself to ensure she isn't hassled. Privacy was such a main concern, she even once had a piece of beach roped off for her as well. Number 2 Problems with Staff Jem seems to have been accused of treating her staff honestly pretty terribly. During a storm of fans sharing their uncomfortable moments with Jen, one woman accused the star of being rude to her drivers. The TikTok user revealed that her father once worked for a company that Jen would use to to hire and provide drivers for her. The TikToker claimed that Jen does not allow the drivers to look at her and that even if the driver looks through the rear view mirror, they weren't exempt from Jen's scolding. Not only that, but she refused to have her luggage ever touch the ground. Because of her diva temperament, she shared that her father refused to drive for JLo because of all the horror stories that he heard through the grapevine. JLo is no stranger to being called a diva, but not even being able to make eye contact really does seem a little bit extreme. And coming in at number one today, we have two full of herself. There's confidence and then there's arrogance, and Jennifer Lopez has walked a dangerous tightrope between both categories for years. As a star even once declared in an interview with Movie Line that she herself is an A-list celebrity, when Movie Line then asked her why she was a hot property in Hollywood at the time, she then delivered an incredibly immodest answer by saying, because I'm the best. She said, I feel I can do anything, any kind of role, I'm fearless. This kind of honesty is somewhat refreshing, but having to much belief in yourself and your own abilities will inevitably get under the skin of your colleagues and viewers alike. Lopez then claimed to have something called the stardom glow, but not everyone saw it that way. At the time of her career, even though it was 1998, it was a good year for the star, but she certainly fell out of favor with critics in 2003 when she landed the worst actress title at the Golden Raspberry Awards. And ever since, her career has had a bunch of ups and downs, and it seems like it gets worse whenever the actor lets all the fame go to her head. Well, that's all we have for you guys today. Let us know what you think of JLo in the comments below.